This lesson is called Finding the Right System. And in this lesson, I'm going to give you a checklist of sorts that will help you in your evaluation process um, of various different strategies and systems that you may be looking at in terms of what to trade. So there are literally dozens and hundreds of trading systems and strategies. And what we're trying to do here is build a selection criteria in which you can use to pick one that fits you. Um, these relate back in many ways to some of the work you've done already around uh, supporting your subconscious to really pick the systems that are most appropriate for your personality so you don't sabotage your efforts. So one of the most important things to consider as you approach picking a system or a setup is to consider your underlying uh, nature. So what are you? Are you conservative or aggressive? Are you a contrarian or more of a trend follower, congruent? Are you secure or a little bit on the edgy side? Right. So if you're, let's say, a contrarian by nature, it'll be very difficult for you to pick up and adopt a trend following system, even though that system may have a lot of uh, validity to it. Um, you may fit more into the model of being someone who um, tries to uh, play mean reversion types of plays. Likewise, what is your you know um, what is your disposition? Are you someone who's a little bit uh, higher stress? Then maybe again, certain systems that require you to make a lot of decisions may not be supportive of your overall general nature. What are your comfort zones around tolerance? Like so, for instance, losses. How do you deal with individual losses and how do you deal with big, long drawdowns? These are things that you need to consider. Likewise, we need to consider losses in terms of winning percentages and streaks. And think about losses in the amounts in use, such as how much are you willing to lose in a single position and how much are you willing to lose in your overall account. Right, so you might be comfortable taking a 10% loss on a single position, but are you willing to lose 10% of your account size? Likewise, patience, another very, very important filtering criteria. How long can you go without a winner and still maintain your confidence? So you may be looking at a system that has a great risk to reward ratio, but if you're only right two times out of 10, if you have the wrong disposition for that, that's going to be very hard for you to continue to take the trades, even though you need to take the trades in order for the risk to rewards to play out in your favor. Many traders ask me about time frames. You know, there, there are many different time frames you can trade. There's day trading, um, that which I guess you could call it scalping. That's probably a better word for it. There's intraday trading, which is kind of a lot on a higher higher interval basis, but uh, you're certainly closing out all your trades by end of day. There's shorter term trading or swing trading, where you're holding positions for for days or weeks. And finally, there's position trading or longer term trading, where you're holding for substantial moves. Think about which one of these fits your personality best, and which type of analysis fits best. You know, there's fundamental analysis and there's technical analysis, and and I think you know there's a bit of a uh, of a myth that you have to be one or the other, and that's not true. In fact, you know, uh, most of the of the strongest traders in the world have strengths in both categories. They're not strictly fundamental or technical, as when you have the fundamentals lined up with the technical, uh, then you know you have a very very powerful set of uh, of confluences. So I would certainly advocate perhaps trying to develop both sides and not having to pigeonhole yourself in one or the other camps. Again, it's all about your your personality. But just as a word of caution, again, there's you know various different types of, of trading styles. Um, and probably the easiest way to, to categorize that would be a dis, you know the, the opposite the the distinction of a, a discretionary trader and the mechanical trader. And while discretionary trading is, is a very, very hot thing to be doing, uh, in my mind, I strongly against being, I strongly advise uh, being a purely discretionary trader when you first begin. Because 
To be a true discretionary trader involves applying a lot of intuition and gut in your trading so that you can be adaptive and be one step ahead of market action. And in the beginning, when you first start trading, there really isn't room for that. You haven't earned the right yet to develop your t or to rely on your, your intuition as you haven't developed yet. So in the beginning, when you first start on your journey, it is really, I think, the best idea to, to be more systematic in your approach. That is being uh, more, more cut and dried in terms of your entries and your exits so you can follow them and practice the routine of trading perfectly. Now think about what market condition, conditions suit you best. Are they range-bound conditions when things are channeling? You will operate best in those conditions. Is it trending uh, tra trade, trending markets when uh, the markets are going simply up and you're looking simply for pullbacks to, to buy? Are you, again, a contrarian who looks for reversals by picking tops and bottoms and playing the mean reversion? Or are you more of a momentum person who likes to hop on the, the next hot thing and look for breakouts? Which methods agree with you? And there are many methods out there, but here's some general strategies which may which may overlap. There's pattern trading, where you're actually looking simply for um, technical or predictive price patterns that you're looking for and to, to, to exploit. There's technical analysis. In this case, I'm talking about specifically technical indicators. There are quantitative methods, where you may be doing uh, quantitative work, looking for uh, places to arbitrage or perhaps to uh, define um, historical trends or patterns. And there's automated methods, right, where you're simply trying to automate an approach that is, uh, again, looking for any one of these, uh, any one of these particular uh, sets of, of options. Ultimately, it boils down to which are you strongest in. So there's really two main methods as it pertains to trading a system. There's the entry and exit. And then there's the actual money management uh, aspect of things. And both needs to need to be evaluated um, against not only its efficiency and effectiveness in the marketplace, but also in terms of your strengths. So for risk management, and we're going to talk more about this in a lot more detail, but every system has to have risk management baked into it. So what mechanisms are baked into your trading system to control and thus limit your potential downside risk? This would involve either the use of stops or the use of options to hedge your positions or the use, of, the use of spreads or even scaling into the position so that you're not exposing yourself to too much risk until the position begins to work in your favor. So all these ideas need to be considered as you evaluate your, your, uh, your system. A little more risk management. So if you're using stops, here's here's some more stuff to think about. So which method of stop placement agrees most with you? Do you want to use stops, fixed stops as a percent of the amount you're willing to lose? Or do you uh, lose on your account that is? Do you want set dollar amounts? Maybe you never want to lose more than 100 bucks at a time. Maybe the stops are more indicator based. So let's say, you know, if a, if a moving average, um, crossover happens or if a certain Fibonacci level breaks is that where you layer your stops or is it something more indicator based like something like an average true range average true range or ATR type of approach where you're looking for the average true range and perhaps layering your stops below the you know the average range of a of a, um, of a product or an instrument let's talk about extra strategies so what suits you best? Do you prefer using targets? Are you going to use trailing stops to get out of the positions, or are you going to get out 100% once it hits your target? And if you do use targets, how are you using your targets? If you're scaling in, are you scaling out? Again, these are elements that we need to think of as we're building out our systems, because we're going to talk about in a few moments about the outcome being the ability to define your system very, very clearly so that, once again, so that you can trust in your system. All of these ideas at the end of the day have to be supportive by sound reasoning. Right? So you want to ultimately be confirmed 
not by simply our preferences or our biases. That's important, of course, because you want to do things that are in congruence with how you know with who we are. But at the same time, there has to be it has to be backed in 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 truth in terms of its actual um, tr trustworthiness as it pertains to trying to use it in the market. So, is it based on sound reasoning? Is it based on research and analysis? Have you tested it? Is it time tested across not just this past year's data, but you know, uh, subsequent or previous years? I mean, or maybe even fore tested. That is, you know, proven in real trading. Is there, is it congruent with your philosophy? So, do you understand the philosophy of of maybe using ATRs as a stop uh, method? Does it agree with you? And finally, does it match your strategy? So, the method in which you're scaling out of trades or or stopping out of trades, does it match the strategy? Uh, that you're using let's say you know you're a trend follower or your mean reversion person does it match that we don't want to be creating methods inside our system that are again um, not congruent with the overall strategy so here's kind of the checklist for a really functional system number one it has to be simple some of the best systems in the world they can be written on the back of a napkin they don't require a dictionary and an encyclopedia uh, to, to you know to describe how it works. Likewise, most great systems lend themselves to being traded consistently. That means they're clear cut enough that they're easy to follow. There isn't a lot of gray. That means they can be easily documented, right? That means you can put your pen to paper and write down the exact setup and trigger criteria that defines an entry and the exit criteria to find a stop or a profit. Can it be back tested? Can you actually take this system now and actually back test it or forward test it? Is it complete? Have you or can you fully document out this system from entry to exit? Or is there a lot of discretionary discretion there where you need to be the operator in order for the system to work. Because the ideal situation is that you'd be able to take this setup and actually share it with someone and they'd be able to trade the setup. That is a good system when you have that level of clarity that you could theoretically outsource this or share this to someone else. It needs to be that clear. Okay. Ultimately, we want to be able to use a number of criteria to actually um, um, evaluate the performance of a system. So number one, will that system provide a sufficient number of trading opportunities to meet your business objectives? If you have certainly certain yearly profit goals or monthly or quarterly profit goals, does a system have enough, you know, uh, swings at the bat, so to so to speak, to be to give you the opportunity to make money? So you know, if you have yearly profit goals and the system only trades once a year then that there may not be enough uh, swings at the bat there for you to get that goal done number two is there sufficient risk to reward a reward to risk rather uh, in the setup so based upon the amount of risk you're taking is the reward justify the risk What's the win-loss percentage, right? So is there a sufficient winning percentage there? What's the profit-to-loss profit to loss ratio like? So how much bigger are your winners to your losers? If your losers greatly outweigh your winners, then it's going to be a net-net losing system. That's obvious. But even if your losers, or even if your profits are just slightly greater than your losses, then even then you may not have a buffer, a big enough buffer uh, to sustain drawdown. And personally, what's the acceptable maximum drawdown that this system is going to give before you need to stop trading that system or setup? And we'll get more into that later on. So to summarize, in a nutshell, four steps. Number one, we need to first be begin with our business objectives. What do we want to get accomplished in terms of our trading? Think of it like a business plan, right? You're running a business. Number two, select the strategy that's going to allow you to to, to fit. That's going to allow you to meet, uh, you know, number one. That is your business objectives. 
Okay, so we need to find the right strategies to be able to meet our our income goals or our profit goals. It's just like hiring an employee. All right, so we want to hire and and back just the right number of employees to help us reach our business goals. Number three, now that you have a, a, a setup and a system in mind, we need to begin to apply and refine the methods we're using in terms of the entries and entries and exits and our risk management within that strategy. And four, we need to define this system, soup to nuts, so that we could easily pass on the system to someone else, to another trader to trade, because we want to have that level of clarity and certainty in the systems we're trading.